Hello, welcome back to the park for May for podcast number 720. This is Todd. No, Todd, not now. AKA Negative Camber. Ah, uh, you know why I've asked you here. You must convince the villagers that I'm harmless. That's exactly what I need you to do. Tonight, for your kind consideration, we're going to be talking about, well, we're going to be talking about some news. But before doing any of that, I have to introduce my guest tonight, and you know what that means. Exactly. I got to go all the way to the right coast of America, nestled in our nation's capital, where she applies her skills as a master statistician. You know her. You love her. It's the lovely, redoubtable Grace. Grace, how are you doing tonight? Doing pretty good. Just pretty good. Yeah, you know, same as same yeah. as every Monday night. Pretty good. Yeah, it's um, Monday night. Yeah, you know. Um, I I did. I know that you didn't uh, put this in the notes, but. I did watch the McLaren launch today because yeah. I was off today for President's Day, and boy, that was it was something. Um, no tire sitting though. No, no, but I did. I did really want to when when uh, Natalie asked uh, Seidel like, "So what do you think of the car?" And see, and this is why I can't be in anything, right? Like. I would have gone, well, it's orange. I mean, it's it's different, but not that different, right? Like what, yeah. you know, because I already loved, I loved when they were there um, with James Key, like the two driving, and they're like looking at, it totally reminded me of the guys under a broken down car under the hood. Right. They don't know what they're looking at, right? Or maybe one of them does, but the other six guys are just like, whoa, that, whoa, whoa, that over there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. They don't know what they're looking for, what they're talking about. But that's, so it's totally what the drivers look like, because they're just like, Oh yeah, and this thing over here, and oh yeah, you're right, James. I like the way this floor looks. <laughs> you're the dry. I, like I would just be like, I don't know, it's blue. It's nice. I mean, at least Ricciardo was like, what's well, got my name on it? That's exciting. <laughs> like I don't know. I know. I was waiting for Danny Rick to go. Now you prepare that Fetzer valve with some gauze pads and some three in one oil. That would have been right. good. And your line is, you're right. The arrow bits do look different this year, yeah. right? Or whatever you know. They're- yeah changes were you yeah know, right? it was great change the way this floor looks this year <laughs> i tweeted there was this uh one shot when lando came out and she was interviewing and i tweeted because right over his left shoulder there was this really excited young young man and he was so excited and he was like oh my god that's me <laughs> that's me you know I and he was it. so excited so i made a little gif out of it and tweeted it now i don't know if it's him or not but there was this Twitter account that said, "Hey, I'm the McLaren." Kid. Oh my God, that's we great! We did thanks and all this. Stuff. I don't know. That's Could great. be some, you know, forty year old dude from you know, Omaha. But we're gonna pretend it's that kid. Whoever, I'm gonna pretend it was the kid emailing me saying, "Hey, thanks." And I said, that "Well, no, great. man, you you made it, uh, you know, really special and and brought all of his energy." And uh, so whoever that little kid, he was one happy yeah. kid. It was great. That's like. Um... So, right, because I saw that, and I said, you know, that's me on the Jumbotron anytime at a Wizards game. Yeah, I get yeah. On there. So, <laughs> so, you know, they always have, like, the games that they do during the TV commercial breaks. Well, they do one, the Wizards do one with the Gecko. Like, you have to find the Gecko from Geico Gecko, right? Yeah. But so you know, because he's standing next to you, right? So usually when the Jumbotron goes on, you don't always know, right? But the Gecko's right there, so I'm like, whoa, I'm going to be on! So I'm, like, totally <laughs> nerding out. It's the most ridiculous video ever because, of course, you know, I know I'm going to be on there and Flip's, like, prepared. <laughs> And it was just like, yeah. yeah, I was a total nerd. Like, yeah, look, it's the gecko. I'm on the Jumbotron. <laughs> and especially because we don't have kids. And so unless you're sitting near cute kids, because that's usually what gets you on the Jumbotron. It's like cute kids or yeah. fun dancing. And I'm not really into the fun dancing. Right. Nor do I have cute kids. So unless I steal my friend's kids, which I've totally done. And then we go to games and then get on the Jumbotron because everybody loves cute kids. But yeah, so I feel <laughs> that guy. I totally would have been, the, that's me. Oh, my God. Mom, look. <laughs> right. And then right. – uh, then the other thing too was like I totally if that if I would have been picked as one of those fans I would have totally shown up with my old school McLaren outfit like my yeah. old school hat and stuff and he's like Flip was like no they send you what you have to wear like they send you a hat or they send you the shirt and that's part of the deal of you. Oh, being you should have showed up in your Predator gray hat. Just a little, <laughs> just a gone. little nod to Ron. Nice Ron. You know. I could have gone, you know, but I'm like, but I've had that. I got that hat when. Kimmy Reagan was at that team. I was yeah, like, yeah. I've been in a relationship with that hat longer than my husband, which is true. <laughs> it is true. <laughs> I've had that hat for a long time. So it was just really funny that he's like, no, they, you, you have to wear their hat or their, you know, the current stuff. I'm like, oh yeah. man, that is not okay. But it was cool. It was fine. But you know, there's, 
I mean, the car launches just aren't what they are. And, uh, you know, it's not that interesting, really, because it's not that the cars aren't that different this year. But right. I did also totally taking over the show on some other tangent. But I did also want to mention, what is it with Ferrari having both a launch for their team and for the car? No, Ferrari, you get one launch. <laughs> Well, this is crap. You don't get to be like, look, here's Carlos Sainz. Look at his hair. Look how nice he is. And then here's our car. Like, no. You- oh, they're going to make a meal out of it because yeah, once they figured out how inexpensive it is to stream a launch instead of flying the world to a location, you know, they could do two launches now. You know, it's, I mean, they could be like, money. and if you look out the window, that's Haas over there, but we're separate entities now. <laughs> right. Right. Don't look in the wind tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> I, just thought, I just thought when I looked at the schedule, you know, because not all the teams have put out their date yet, but I was just like, oh man, Ferrari, two dates, two dates. That's how we're playing it this year. You better yeah. bring it. You you can have two launch dates and then, you know, middle behind, you know, Aston Martin this year, right? Like, what is that, man? You yeah, that's, launch dates. that's kind of exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't, I, now we'll watch. Like I would... I normally have like no interest in this. I just want to watch. I just want to look at the pictures or highlights or something. I don't want to. I mean, the McLaren launch was like an hour. I'm like, well, I don't, you know, that's great. But they did fan you know, questions were fun, but you know, whatever. They, they, um, and this is coming from a Ferrari fan, but last year's launch, I don't know if it was John Elkin or it really, he and both of the leaders mm-hmm. are for just so low energy, you know, yeah. it was just, um, it's Ferrari. And now the, you know, the one guy obviously stepped down, but it yeah. was just, um, yeah, it was just low energy. And I hope they can bring, you know, they had the whole dance and the, mm-hmm. you know, the beautiful setting and the theater and all that kind of stuff. And it was just, um, Oh, that dance was great. Yeah. Wasn't it? <laughs> that was, yeah. That was, something. it was interpretive dance. Like, you know, I'm dance like, as if you were racing in F1. Those wheels took a minute, but then I, I hit that memory. Oh yeah. That yeah, yeah. 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 Oh. So it's kind of like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, um, if it was me and I'm, I'm not, you know, Ferrari, I don't work for Ferrari or Italian. I'm, I, you know, but I'd be arm waving like crazy. I just think, you know, you know, we talk about how, like, I'm always impressed that the mechanics or, well, your engineer, right? Your race engineer, no matter what the driver does, just goes, yes, Lance, just keep going straight. Yeah, right. We know, right? Like, they just have this even tone to them mm-hmm. that I always find. Like, the driver's like, what the hell? Whoa, 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 whoa. And the guy's <laughs> just like, we're going to bring it in. We're going to put, like, take that guy. Whatever's the opposite on your team, that's the guy you want at your launch. Yeah, right, right? right. Like, right. the opposite of your engineer, that's the guy you want selling yeah. your, selling your launch. Yeah, high energy. I don't know. I don't know. Um, or Flavio Briantori, who isn't necessarily high energy, but very entertaining, right? Like, <laughs> well, he is that, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you got you to gotta work with that. I mean, yeah. especially online, right? Like, you really have to, like, project or emote or whatever. Right. You know? Like, you get us excited, right? Come on, man. Right. So, for... For Alpine, I think they ought to have Fernando come out with a walker with tennis balls on the on the lane. Just <laughs> just for you know, just to mix things up, you know. Make it like, oh my gosh, he's injured far worse than we thought he was. <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, you know, then do the, the Willy Wonka, then do the tumble and stand yeah, up. Right. Ta-da! Uh, here know. I am. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that would be young, good. Young young driver Fernando Alonso. Yeah, I think yeah. that would be yeah, I am was... gonna be disappointed That's if we make it through a whole car launch season and not one session has the driver sitting on the front tires. Come on, people. I mean, it'll happen. We live for of, that. Most of the launches will probably happen at Bahrain, right? In winter testing. Yeah. And so that's when we'll see it. That's when know? we'll see it. They'll pull it out of the garage. The driver's sitting on the front mm-hmm. wheels. Take and then we pictures. have our obligatory front wheel sitting picture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, plus they had mentioned in the uh, McLaren launch that, um, you know, the car itself was already on its way to Silverstone. I don't know if the drivers <laughs> are also on their way to Silverstone, right? To get pictures. So maybe, maybe we'll get McLaren pictures of the drivers on the tires. We just didn't get it at the car launch. Right. We may get it at Silverstone because yeah. the car was already on its way to Silverstone. So um, yeah. we, we cross our fingers, right? There's still some opportunity to see Lando and Daniel Ricciardo sitting on some tires. Yeah, I, I'd be up for that. I would too. And uh, <sighs> I can't wait to see what why Ferrari needs two launches. Yeah, I can't imagine. Hey, what are you gonna- it's one thing to talk about your car and the development and all the things, you know, and then interview your drivers about the right. season and what they think of their new car and all that stuff. I'm wondering what they're going to talk about just to the drivers for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Man. So 
Maybe it'll, they'll have it where they're going to a studio to record a, a song or maybe. something. Who knows? Maybe they're all just, maybe just like the unbox. Maybe they're all just waiting for McLaren to go so they see what they have to do for the rest of the yeah, season. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. so February 26th is the team launch, and mm. March 10th is the car launch. Ah, there you go. So right, in March 10th, that's because uh, winter testing is the 12th, right? Yeah, so right. right. So they're just, they'll, so they're not going to show, the, so what that tells you is they're not ready to show the car yet. No, right. They're going to, they're hoping to have it like duct taped together for winter testing. Yeah. Well, if, yeah. if it was like, if it was like Racing Point, maybe they're just waiting for Mercedes to re release theirs and then they could take some quick uh, measurements and design it real quick. <laughs> maybe, right. That guy is taking pictures of my car. Yeah. How comes... Red Alpha Tari is gonna be announced, and Red Bull hasn't set a date yet because it's the next one. They're on the nineteenth. Well, yeah. you know that Red Bull, you know Christian, he's he's elusive. It's tomorrow. <laughs> That's true. Maybe he doesn't want anybody copying again the non-change design from last year to this year. But yeah, right. Right, right. Their floors are different, so that's the next yeah. one. But I don't know. I can't wait to see what Ferrari's got. What yeah, they've got for me. Two launches. I can't wait. It's gonna be exciting. All right, let's talk about some news, shall we? I'm ready. Okay. Well, you know, first the big news of this past week was Lewis Hamilton signing a one-year deal in extension, or yeah. whatever you want to call it. As we discussed, this was the most likely outcome, given yeah. the changes at Mercedes and the long-term deals are going to have a lot of hair on them so and a lot of complexities around that long-term post-racing career that he wanted from mercedes and being that mercedes is in the the thrust of a change and the f1 teams the mercedes f1 team is also in a thrust of a change with ineos coming in with mercedes spending daimler out there's just a lot going right. on over there right i'm I'm just not so sure that Mercedes corporate, as they divested their ownership down to just a third, I'm not sure they were really willing to dig in yet to this sort of Lewis drive for another year or two and then this long-term um, deal, employment deal, that he was wanting. So signing a one-year deal to get Lewis's eighth title, in my mind, as we even said many weeks ago, this is the lowest hanging fruit. And but I also think setting up that foundation with Lewis, uh, with with a few quid of the Ineos back team, I'm I'm imagining that's why. Um, I think that's a, a a deal sweetener, right, for Lewis. Yeah. Um, and so they sweeten the deal a little bit for Lewis uh, because it's a very important cause to him, and I think the team can assi can assist that foundation with its initial mm -hmm. funding and those kind of things. So, you know, I think. I think it's not really a compromise. I just feel like it was one of those deals where Lewis wanted to drive for a year or two or whatever it was yeah. more and then have a sort of a long-term ambassador role uh, for uh, uh, the social causes that he, he is, uh, that are important to him. And I think that's what he was looking for. So I think what this thing does is says, yeah, um, look, we can achieve – a smaller version of that, you know, maybe right. not this long, long-term sort of thing, but we could do another year, get your eighth title, uh, set up a foundation that will see the money for that foundation. Right. That'll give you some some uh, uh, purpose that you're you're driving hard towards. And so I think that it was um, a good way to sort of reconcile the two right. things, if that makes sense. Uh, that's I just my hunch. Um, right. As to as for how much, I have no idea what he's getting paid for this one year. But I'm assuming that's why they brought Ineos in. <laughs> Thank right. you, Cha Ching. Right. Um, and you know they brought that in for some operating capital. It, you know if it's if it's remotely around that rumored forty million a year, right? Um, you know is that worth an eighth title? Uh, considering that possibly Valtteri or even George could possibly win that eighth title for Mercedes uh, in that car. Um, you know, why wouldn't it be taking it capitalizing? You get all the the uh, brand association with Lewis winning his eighth. Uh, the, you know, it would be his uh, his eighth title record breaking. So, you know, why wouldn't probably you? is. Right. Right. Um, before you get. Oh, as I mentioned, and I took a lot of heat for this, I would have, and I said, I would have just signed him for a one-year deal. And after that, I probably would part ways. 
But to be honest, I think I would have moved George into the seat this year alongside him to get a year under his belt oh, before I'm... parting companies with Lewis. Sure. I think that makes the most sense, right? I mean, yeah. unless you're a Valtteri Botas, of course. Well, right. If you're, yeah, of course. If you're a Valtteri Botas. But yes, you're, you're, no, you're right. I think the traditional Formula One logic would tell you, right? You don't, you want to bring your young driver in under the veteran before the veteran leaves, right? So that they can impart their wisdom onto the young Huckabuck and right. that guy can now go and be your top driver. So unless Masa, you're Val Masa Schumacher. Exactly. Ex yeah. Exactly. So I think yeah. unless unless you're Valtteri Botas, I think that is what most people would do. But um I think you'd have to pay I'm sure Valtteri Botas doesn't make the pennies, but I wonder I wonder how much more George would demand. I mean George did show he's no schlub, right? Like I mean Yeah. I'm wondering if Lewis's delay for all those months mm -hmm. didn't get Mercedes in a position of saying, look, we, we don't know where Lewis is going to go. Right. And what his intention. We think he wants to be here, but you never know. Mm -hmm. uh, but we know where Valtteri is and he right. definitely wants. So that's a bird in the hand. We have at least one driver, right? We right. might as well secure that because if Lewis does decide to hang up the helmet, we can, we can move George in and we got Valtteri for stability. So they did the deal yeah. with Valtteri. I don't know. I think if, I think if George was... I'm not saying that happened. I'm just thinking out loud. No, right. But if he was an unknown, you know, I mean, I think we everybody rates George high. Mm -hmm. And then George was able to be in a Mercedes. And then we all went, well, see, George is worth it. I think if I think if that race last year hadn't happened, maybe. But George really has a lot of negotiation yeah, now that yeah. ability that he wouldn't have had otherwise, because he still would have been. And un like, oh yeah, we've heard you. We've heard you were good, right? Like yeah, people right. have been talking about you being good. Well, he showed he's good, right? Yeah, so, definitely. Um, well, you know, I know my crazy. my thought about doing just a one year thing and parting with Lewis. I'm sure that makes a lot of people irate, but I, you know, just realize the reason I say that is uh, the reason I would make that call is because to be honest, at this point, Lewis is too expensive for where F1 is heading with cost caps. And now they have a new working group or a panel assembled to look at possibly driver salary caps for F1. And if that's the case, you know, Lewis has a certain lifestyle and, and salary that he's expecting for what it is he does. And I'm not saying that 40 million a year or more or whatever isn't right. uh, worth an, a seven, possibly eight time world champion. I'm just saying the way that the sport is going with everything focused on reducing costs, even to the point to get a working group working on driver salary caps, I he's think, expensive. I think, I mean, right. It's not that somebody, people shouldn't be critical of what you're, I mean, people should never be critical in that way, but I mean, cause it's your opinion. We can have a discussion that doesn't mean you want to be critical, but I think the thing is, is that you're bringing the, the, Mercedes side of the discussion to the table. If you're thinking it only of it from Lewis's perspective, then that's a, di you know what I mean? Like, I think oh, you have yeah, to think of sure. it both perspectives. And so I think what, what you're yeah. focusing on is like, that's great, Lewis. We'd love to pay you that money. We totally want to keep you the team, but here's the 700 other things I have to do. Right. I yeah. think it's just like, if a, you know, uh, I, I, I don't have kids, but if your kid came to you and said, hey, I really want to go be an astronaut and you go, OK, but we also have to buy groceries this week and we have to make sure there's a roof over our head and we have to. Do so maybe being an astronaut is not something we can pay for this year. Right. Like, so I think that as the as the company, you have to think of all these other things, whereas Lewis only has to focus necessarily on right now and then his future, which is what he's trying right. to do. Right. Right. Which is smart and isn't yeah, absolutely. in Formula One, right? So yeah. trying to leverage his current to make sure he continues to have a future. It's very yeah. smart. And I think it's going to change the way contracting is done in the future because there's another Lewis Hamilton is going to come along. It's inevitable. So mm -hmm. now it gives you that ability to, to, as a driver, to think not just about me as a driver, but what else can I do for this team and how can I leverage that um, to make my positions safer? Because this is a... Not, not safer, uh, secure, more secure, yeah, right? Because right, this right. is only a sport that you can do to your forties if you're really good, right? Like most yeah. drivers don't make it that long. So it's just like right. any other sport, right? You're just not gonna, you're, you're not gonna be, Lance Stroll is not gonna be in this sport at 42, I don't think. So um, yeah, somebody's gonna pull this 720 out, you know, 
10 years from now or whatever <laughs> right. and be like, oh, remember, remember yeah. when you said, no, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> most drivers don't make it that long. And so you're right. going to have Schumachers and Alonzos and Kimi Raikkonen's and, you know, Lewis Hamilton's, but most drivers don't make it that long. So it makes sense to try to leverage yourself in somewhere else. Yeah. And, and you're once right. One I... person's done it, everybody's going to start doing it. Right. And you're right. I'm looking at it from a Mercedes standpoint. Yeah. You know, if I'm looking at for Lewis's camp, uh, of course, you know, he's got important causes he wants to do mm -hmm. long term. He's sure. got, uh, you know, his salary and is he worth it with his platform and his brand equity and all those sort of things. You can make a lot of cases for that. Um, and I'm not agreeing or disagreeing, right. but if I'm Mercedes, I, I would have. No, I would have done a one year deal like they did. Mm -hmm. Maybe some seed money for a foundation for him. And then at the end of that, I'd probably uh, I'd probably part ways. You know, and some part of this too may also be, um, so like the presidential, this is a weird segue, I don't know, right? Well, the, the point of the presidential budget in the United States is not because that's the budget that Congress passes, but it's the president's way of saying, this is what's important to me, right? Mm -hmm. So if I give a gazillion dollars to, I don't, whatever, project A, and I give less money to project B, you can then read into it, oh, project A is what this administration values over project B, mm. even though that funding may not work out that way for Congress. So this could also, this is also a way of Lewis saying, here's my future, here's what's important to me, Mercedes, if you want to continue to support me, here's what I'm about and here's what I'm looking for, even if that's not something that Mercedes ends up carrying and he goes somewhere else, not in Formula One or to another team associated with Formula One. Um, but it is a way of signaling, like, here's how I'm going to play now, right? Like, right. I, I get where you're coming from, but I also want to do these other things, and I think it's important for the sport. So then it becomes, even though Congress doesn't pay for it, the president said something. It's a way of being That's noticed. why Biden's budget led off with more uh, investment in designing an R&D for Corvettes. Yeah. <laughs> He's he aiming works. to get another Corvette. <laughs> <laughs> Good on him. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you didn't put out the budget yet. I, that yeah. was, I was took that way too serious. But yeah. um, but anyway, yeah. so now you also all know. Like sometimes we're insightful. When the presidential budget comes out, don't read it that way. It is yeah. not like a, a budget budget. It's just a way of signaling what the administration finds is important. Right. Um, so nonetheless, yes, more more Corvettes in like great colors. What? We were just talking about this because they have a we saw one and it was like a like a highlighter yellow um you know because flip has an old cor corvette older now <laughs> and yeah. uh, we saw one of the new ones but it's like this fluorescent yellow it was like a highlighter uh -huh. yellow i'm like i don't know how i feel about that so then i always love looking up the colors names because that's such a great like you know like uh my bmw's mojave it's gray what mojave what the hell no, that, it's right? predator gray yeah right <laughs> Exactly. So they have both a Sebring orange and an oh. Elkhart Lake blue. I feel like they should have kept the like oh. racing track themes for all of them, like Watkins Glen green. Like I, I just right. feel like, why did you abandon this? So uh, with just two of your, you know, 15 colors, you could have had a whole, whole color spectrum based on current or, you know, Lime Rock. I don't know. That's what, I guess Lime Rock would also have to be a green, but you know, I mean, you just could. You I think you do like Tri City Motor Speedway down. <laughs> right. I just Perfect. Think, just keep with it. Uh, and then that's when I discovered that Lacuna Seca Blue is a real color. And that's like that BMW blue that yeah, that's we right. all think of. And so it was really funny yeah. that I was like, why wouldn't you? Because Laguna Seca, I think, is really always a cornerstone American track when I think of one. And I was like, oh, right. because that's already been taken by BMW. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. So, well, the, inter blue, now you know. the interesting thing on the Lewis thing, as for if if he does part ways at the end of the year, yeah, what would his replacement be? And according to one Christian Horner, he thinks this. that Max is in the lead as the option, even ahead of George. Of course he does. And he says that, yes, there are performance clauses in Max's contract that could release him for the Merck seat. But he thinks Max will stay at Red Bull. He believes in the program. He has a great relationship. He knows the investment they're making in the in the, in the team. And he doesn't think uh, that Max would leave. And I doubt he thought Daniel Ricciardo would either. Uh, uh -huh. or, and I doubt he thought Sebastian Vettel would for Ferrari either. So- uh, Or Alex he, Albon. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. Too soon? Um, <laughs> so- so there you go. Uh, uh, I okay, so I took Christian Horner's as like, so if you if you do something dumb, 
and you go, oh God, that was dumb. And your spouse goes, oh, that wasn't that dumb. Or, oh, it's all right. You know, I'll help you. Or I still love you. That's Christian Horner, right? Like that's just the like ride or die spouse right there. That's yeah, just right. like, I still love you. It's okay, Max. You're still my favorite, even though everybody's <laughs> right. talking about Lewis and you're not stupid just because you <laughs> right. did this stupid thing. So I just totally took right. that as like Christian Horner. Nobody was really, at- of course he says Max. What else is he going to say? Unless he said something like, if he said like caveat, that would have been great. That yeah, right. Been, that would have been the story right there. Nobody would be talking about Lewis's, you know, signing a contract yeah. if he had said that. But That's Max was just funny. like, oh, you're my spouse forever. That's so nice. We're good, Max and us. The That's team's, you right. know. Oh. You know, but there's also a part of me that thinks if the 2022 regulation changes are really good, a battle between Luis, Fernando, and Max might be really fun. So staying longer than a year might be kind of fun for Luis. I think so, too. I think yeah. I think that would be fun. I yeah. do, too. All I'm right. here for that. I'd watch that. Yeah, me, too. All right. Well, hey, uh, speaking of uh, Fernando Alonso. Vamos radio. The rest of the race. Um, he had a bit of an altercation this week. He did. Yeah. If you were excited to be returning to F1 in an Alpine F1 car, then getting hit by a car and breaking your jaw is not a good way to show it. Unfortunately, Fernando was involved in a cycling incident with a vehicle and suffered a fractured upper jaw in the process. He was hospitalized for surgery and then released to recover at home. And according to Alpine, he'll be ready for the 2021 season opener. Um, and I'm kept, you know, as soon as I read that, I was, I, before I even found out how, yeah. what condition he was in is like, oh my gosh, those poor people at Renault that had to be one of those heart and throat moment. Like it was with Kubica, oh, yeah. right? Sure. I was like, oh my gosh, what's happened to Fernando. And thankfully, uh, he's uh, at home recovering. And I think yeah. his social media said, you know, hey, he's okay. Uh, Thanks for all the well wishes, and he's looking forward to the 2021 season. I did find the press releases from Alpine to be rather spartan and almost cold. So here's here's the thing. I thought I thought that they were very much right. They were just factual, right? So I think one is we won't actually know until he shows up at Bahrain, right? What that is because. To me, it was like, you know, in football, but I think hockey is a better example, but you know, like there's some strategery involved with how much injury you reveal. Right. So you don't want to say Alonzo is so injured that he might not come back at Bahrain, even if that may be the case, right. Even if it is more serious than what the team is putting forward, because there's some strategy involved, but it also reminded me like in hockey, they're always really generic, like upper body injury. Now, Sidney Crosby could come to the next game missing an eyeball, and they still would have called it an upper body injury, right? (laughs) Right. There's really like two injuries, upper body, lower body, and that's it. That's all you have in hockey. And so I think think it's vague on on purpose, and we really won't know because it could be – like, you know, like one report was like, he dislocated his shoulder and lost some teeth – shoulder, his jaw and lost some teeth – or it could be like reconstructive face surgery, right? Yeah. Upper body injury. He could be missing an eye. He could have bruised his elbow. We really don't know. We won't know. But if he shows up in the paddock wearing full headgear to immobilize it and everything. We'll know something's up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, again, I, I'm not, I guess I did just try to make light of somebody's injury, but I am glad he's okay. Oh, for sure. And then, yeah. um, but I did, I, I guess I kind of read it as they were, they were hedging their bets that he was going to be there for uh, winter testing, although that may not happen and we won't know until we know. Yeah. They were, they were kind of like, yeah, he's had surgery and he's uh, released he's and just a couple of days, he's going to start an incredibly progressive uh, exercise <laughs> regimen to be in top right. physical condition when he starts the season in 2021. I'm thinking, I, you know, at this point, let's just talk about sending him a nice package of straws mm-hmm. so he can eat. <laughs> You know, I was thinking, I mean, you know, it also dawned on me too, right? I mean, right. I joke about, you know, young driver Fernando Alonso, but I, I don't know about you, but everything hurts more every year you get older, oh, right? Not that getting truth. hit by a car ever is going to feel great, but yeah, everything gets, gets harder as you each year you get older. So I'm sure that's, it's not as easy to. I, I'm sitting here playing wounded my elbow out of nowhere. I was picking something up and trying to lower it down over a fence, like a little fence. 
and right at my elbow, I hear that I felt the snap from my elbow going down the inside of my forearm. I have no idea what's going on there. It hurts Ow. like crazy. Sounds and uh, really painful. yeah, it's not good. And I'm sitting here thinking, and it's snowed about seven inches yes. or so in oh, Snowmageddon great. here. And the idea of me trying to get out and drive to the doctor. Uh, so I hear my elbow. Somebody <laughs> look at <your> elbow. <laughs> I can't lift anything. And I did find out in the last 24 hours, I can't do crap with my left hand. No, right. That's terrible. Right. You know, That's everything how is... I play guitar with my left hand is beyond me. Meanwhile, eating, you're like, ah, yeah, meanwhile, eating, ah. You're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> I can't write. I can't do right. a mouse. I can't, you know, it's just terrible. <laughs> uh. Um, yeah, yeah, like Flip once wrote his back clean, you know, because he bent down, you know, because yeah, he had the stainless yeah. steel refrigerator, so he bent down to clean the bottom of the refrigerator and throw out his back. Like, <sighs> we got to come up with a better story. Like, well, you see, he was swinging from the chandelier and right. I his back. No, he was doing household chores. Like, yeah. come on, this is yeah. getting old sucks. On the <sighs> inside, I don't feel any older, but on the outside, every year gets Terrible. a little older. <laughs> and, you know, I'm online, I'm self-diagnosing, right? And I'm <laughs> on my WebMD and all these places. Okay, okay. It was like, well, do you think it's a bicep? You know, it's like, no, it doesn't really go up my. It's like it going down the inside of my forearm. You know, and it's kind of like, yeah. okay, it's like a tendon tear or, or ligament or muscle or strain or whatever it was. And and then you know, but all of them say, you know, these generally happen in men between the ages of forty five and sixty. You know, it's like, ah, oh, damn it. I think damn. I I just assume everything on Web Web MD ends with cancer. You know, like right. it could be a muscle tear. It'll be okay. Just rest. It could be this. Just put some ice on it. It could be cancer. You better yeah. do something about it because tomorrow is going to be a dark day, right? Like, I just feel yeah. like everything on WebMD ends in cancer. I got to quit self diagnosing. You get in there, it's like, <laughs> yeah, I think I do have chills. Yeah. yeah. I think my hands are a little shaky. Right. Yeah. You know, well, wait a minute. <laughs> I have cancer. Let me, uh, do you smell that? Do you smell that? Yeah. I have cancer. I'm done. Yeah. yeah. I, I smell almonds. What is that? No. I have gangrene for crying oh, out loud. That's crazy. Oh, crazy. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. anyway, get get better, Alonzo. All yeah, right. Yeah. Long story short, you're you're not a spring chicken anymore. And right. Yeah. Everything right. everything hurts, and just take care and. Just come back fully ready yeah. to go. Just tell you looked at that car in the face and you went. <laughs> that's it. You know what he should do? He should what? just be the Stig the rest of the season and never take the helmet yeah, off. Yeah, he could just show up with the helmet, you know? That's right. And I keep thinking, you know, uh, I think it was in NASCAR. I remember they used to have this open face helmets. Yeah. And then if somebody got injured, they'd have, or like in hockey, if they get a, a mouth injury or they have the big plastic thing guard around their mouth and yes. everything. I think if he just shows up with like a helmet on constantly, it's like a big bulky thing to protect his jaw. Yeah. And he's and just wearing a suit, never takes the helmet off. He'd be perfect. The, the NBA, they wear what look like, like, full yes, the opera masks. Right? Yes, exactly. Clear, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. Those are the most ridiculous. I'm like, yeah. I don't think, I don't think you could get me in one of those. Like, yeah. And I'm not even like a professional, like nobody, especially now nobody sees me. You guys, that's who sees right. me, my husband. But you know, like, and my mom on Zoom, right? Nobody who sees right. me, right? But I can't imagine being like LeBron James wearing that like family opera scene through a mask as a, as protection in case they get hit. Well, but, maybe it may may not be a big deal. Maybe he just shows up and says, yeah, I got Invisalign, you know? Can yeah, you see him? Yeah. <laughs> Everything's fine. They just good. put Invisalign, we're good. We're good. I just... <sighs> I think it'll be interesting, but I do think you could just just do the whole Stig thing and just wear your helmet the whole time. And I think it'd be know. great. And and you're not taking the helmet, and they couldn't really prove if it was Alonzo or not. You know, right. midway through the season, he takes his helmet off. It's Nico Hulkenberg. Oh my gosh! Or uh, Sorokin, right? Isn't that their? Yeah, their, right, right. Their, right? Uh, yeah. I should have known oh, if it wasn't for those dastardly kids. Right? That's right. I would have gotten away with it. All right. Next up, okay. I'm going to talk about Sebastian Vettel, but I'm not going to talk about his haircut. This just in from Paul Charsley, who just oh. texted me in the middle of the show. <laughs> and he wants all of you to know, he didn't say this, I'm saying this, but he did send a picture. He wants all of you to know he was, he was planning on being on this podcast tonight. Was. But Dallas, who isn't used to snow... 
has gotten a bunch of snow yes and they're like on a rolling blackout thing so they're cutting his power and um so he's got that going for him so yeah he couldn't join tonight so he, he was sending me a picture of the candles he had all set up in his house know, I'm going to have to text him because it's like, you know, California would have rolling blackouts. Like, so you left California and now you're in Texas in and Texas. you still have rolling blackouts. Do you see, Paul, that you <laughs> clearly you. are the least common denominator here? Don't move to Maryland. I like my electricity. Do not come back to Missouri. We don't want you. We're good. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yep. your blackouts to yourself, man. Oh, boy. Anyway, back to Sebastian Vettel. Otmar yeah. Snapmower, you know, our favorite. Yeah, I love that guy. The American with a not so American name, as you would know. No, but the best name. But the best name in the past. His parents get real bonus points. Yeah, that. they That's do. That's the best name. That's an awesome name, Otmar. Yeah. Uh, he says he is incredibly, I, I'm saying incredibly, he's pleased with the impact Sebastian Vettel has already had on the team in his short time there. And having never even driven their car yet, he's mm-hmm. making an impact on the team. Oh, very good. Meaning that the reason they chucked out uh, Mexican Sergio Perez, who was doing a bang up job to bring Vettel in, was to get all these benefits from a four time world champion. Sure. And he wants you to know that the benefits are already paying off. All right. Vettel is that good. He is that good. Whether he's got hair or not doesn't matter. He's that good. Here's what he's done. He's already helped with the ergonomics and the complete button layout in the cockpit to make the car much easier to manage. You can see Lance. So where's the on button behind Which the roll? My, my water okay. bottle. <laughs> and Vettel's like, where's the on button behind the roll? Are you guys crazy? You know, Lance doesn't know. Where's the brake pedal? It's a hand okay. crank over here, Lance. Oh. So I'm just, I'm, this is what I'm envisioning when you read this. So we have, uh, you know, both a formula, you know, because Flip has a sim, you know, set up, right? So sure he does. we have the regular, of course he does, right? But I've posted pictures of it, right? So, so here's the Formula One steering wheel, right? And then we got a full steering wheel so that we can play a uh, dirt rally, right? Cause mm. I'm like the Formula One game doesn't, it's too precise. I like some rally, right? That mm. I'll drive. But the, the wheel has the buttons for an Xbox and we have a PlayStation. So you have to make little stickers so that you can change, you know, the, the X and the triangle and the squares to be the right thing for yeah. your PlayStation instead of the Xbox. So long story short, that's what I imagine Vettel doing is like with a magic marker, like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> filling in the little square. So now it's a, you know, an X so that you have the right buttons. You for your see Seb sitting in the cockpit with a label maker. Yeah. Printing out labels and putting yeah. it. No, this water should bottle. be the on button. ERS. Be water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ERS here. Yes. Yeah, well, exactly. Whatever the heck he's doing, he's revolutionized the cockpit already. That's what I imagine happening there. Um, is just putting like some button covers on there so that it makes right. sense. Right. I love it. He's tested their sim and okay. told them where it needs improvement. Okay, all of it. I'm sure. <laughs> Got in there. So it's a, he's like. What they're like? Hey, did you uh, did you like it? And he's kind of like, not good enough, damn it, not good enough. Uh, not Either good that enough. or it's a shit box. I wasn't sure which one you were going to go. <laughs> there you go. You got out and said it's a shit box. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be uh, great. So, it, it's a it's a virtual shit box. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so he's done that, and let's see what else he did. He has shared with his engineer the data both he and they will need in order to improve their car, improve their car during the year. Okay. Otmar went on to say that Lance doesn't have that experience. And so Seb is already earning his keep as a huge mentor to Lance. I want it now! What's the matter with those twops down there? So there you go. Oh, Lance. He can't get a break. Well, he's I never know. been in another team either, right? So I think that's, I mean, yeah. right, some of this is the bravado of having Sebastian Vettel. But I think sure. if you went to any, I said, sure, in any field, right? Like, I joke as a new employee. I was like, oh, well, in my last job, we did it this way, right? And I become very self-conscious about that because nobody wants to hear like, well, my old boyfriend used to do it this way. Why don't you load the dishwasher this way or whatever, right? Nobody wants that. And so I don't, I mean, he will. Of course he will. He knows how to win. And I'm, I think that having a, a Formula One champion and a, a sojourner and a vet at your team is going to exponentially help your team because they've never yeah. had that. But I think this also makes it sound like, um, you know, when you have your performance review, so we have them twice a year, right? But if you get hired, like 
right before a performance review, it sounds like this. What did Grace do? <laughs> well, she looked at the buttons on the steering wheel and well, um, you know, she, she made sure that everything kind of, you know, right, because I've only been working here for two weeks, but you're required to have my performance review today. Right. Because that's when everybody in the government's having them. So I just think this is what this sounds like. We've only had three weeks with them and we're trying to come up with something. Right. And this is what we got. He put right. new buttons on the steering wheel, right? Well, I'm sure Seb will have a big impact. Of uh, absolutely. Course. Otherwise, his dad just bought a very expensive driver coach. Well, that's true <laughs> too, Lance. maybe, yeah. but uh, it's a yeah. bit both. But I think. Yeah. That I, I mean, it, it has to be good for Lance unless unless they just don't get along, which I mean, I don't think Lance is that I'm much sure dummy, will. right? I'm sure that Lance yeah. will, will learn from him and that it will be helpful as well because it's not somebody you're it's a mentor, right? Like he is competing with Vettel, it's his teammate, but it's not the same way as Sergio Perez, who's your peer. You know, Vettel isn't necessarily yeah, if you're Lawrence, you're gonna tell Lance, look. Shut your He's face a four-time champion. Shut up and listen to him and learn be, from him. You're going to be a better driver. Right. Be a sponge. Exactly. Be, be a sponge, sponge with some good hair. Shut your face and listen to what he tells exactly. you, right? Exactly. So I think that's why I think that this is only going to make that team better because this may be um, – what gets them over. I mean, we, I, I talk about this in basketball it happens a lot, right? Like you just, sometimes a team just can't get to the playoffs and then they get a, a, a veteran who perhaps is on the backside of his career, but has been to the playoffs before. And that just can really pick up the team because yep. it's somebody who knows how to do it and how to play the same team over and over again and be yeah. there night after night. And so for sure, I think this is going to, I think it can only help. And if it doesn't help, I'm going to blame Lance Stroll. Well, why not? All right. Sure. I'll In other big way. news, folks, Red Bull have got their wish. Red Bull has successfully uh, gotten F1 and the other teams to agree to an <laughs> engine freeze until the regulation changes in 2025. Now, with the engine freeze in place, Red Bull Racing has formally arranged for them to continue with Honda's intellectual property and current engine in order to compete until 2025. And to do so... They've created a new powertrain division to oversee the power unit management until then. Now, that all makes sense. But the bigger question for me is the creation of this powertrain division in general and the likelihood that they may just um, kick that into high gear and become their own engine manufacturer if the 2025 regulations are affordable. Could Red Bull Racing become a full constructor instead of a privateer who buys engines? And in the past, I would have said that I wouldn't have counted on that due to the galactic price of these hybrids. But if the new changes are at all affordable, then I think they may do that. And according to Horner, the investment they're making in bringing in Honda employees to maintain the current engines till 2025 and creating a new company and division is a long-term effort beyond 2025. Now it's a risk, but I think there are some safety valves, including yeah. a new engine supplier or uh, possibly for 2025, or uh, should their program become untenable for any reason? Right. I think there's a way to get out of that. So, um, I think that's interesting. You said that the team is going to be adding a technical director, a managing director, and an operations director. And then uh, I think it was over at the race that I read this, and I thought it was a wonderful point. Could that, does anyone know what Andy Cowell of Mercedes engine fame, who yeah. recently left, is up to? Or Mario Illion, who has mm -hmm. a, a strong relationship right. with Honda already. So that all is very intriguing because as the biggest privateer in the sport uh to create their own engine department is a big big investment from from dieter so yeah i think that uh i think dietrich mattishitz is making a huge investment in this i think that's what christian horner was saying you don't make that kind of investment just thinking about how I can nurse a Honda engine to 2025. This is a long-term no. prospect. I, I think that a, this sounds like an Ikea project, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Here's, here's some pieces and some Allen wrenches. Good luck. Put it together. Yeah. Um, but I also, I, I think that 
Well, I think this is this is great. I mean, I, even if this is just speculative news, I think this is a, a a great a great thing to talk about, right? The idea of Red Bull becoming a full constructor yeah. and making their own engines. But I think I'd like Ferrari to note this is why you have two launches in a season. <laughs> right. Not right. for whatever Ferrari's gonna roll out, right? right? But I'm just saying, like, I feel like so Gran Turismo, they have all these like um like, you know, little things that you have to learn how to do before you can play a race to help. You don't have to, but they're yeah, like right. tutorials, right? So you can you can get a feel for how to race and how to take the lines and that kind of stuff. But there's this music that when you get a gold, even if I've played it and I've heard it a million times, everybody must stop and we must listen <laughs> to that music. I feel like that's how I want to like come into a meeting, right? Like this, this grand, you know, I just won music. I think that's <laughs> what you need to play rolling out this new engine, you know, when they build I think it. It'd be perfect. That's a great idea. It's like, here comes the Red Bull and look. There it is, the exactly. Red Bull engine. That's it's what perfect. I'm saying. So Christian Horner, I know you listen to our podcast. So I'm just saying, this is a great idea and this is what you should do. Yeah. And I think it would be fun, but I do imagine that the like the the you know the technical directions that come with whatever in the intellectual property that they gave you is going to be like IKEA directions and it it's going to be like four steps but it really encompasses like 58 steps. Right. But it's only four pictures, right? Right. <laughs> so right. make sure you have a friend, don't lift heavy things by yourself and good luck. And bend at the knees. That's right. That's right. <sighs> Yeah, so very interesting. I yes. don't think I didn't see that one coming. Um, no, I didn't yeah, either. Good. I didn't either. And but I'm excited about it. I think it's great. And I think I think you're right. If they get you know either Andy or Mario, I think you know, I mean it's oh it, Andy it, would it, be a coup. It would be a whole new level oh. for this team, right? Like yeah, it would really push them push them to a new level. So Andy I would think be they an do. absolute would, coup. It would be great. It would yeah. be great. Uh, sorry. So the teams got together at an F1 commission meeting this last week, and they are interested in testing this whole sprint race concept. Nobody F1... else is interesting, but they're interested. Oh, okay. Oh, they're interested. Absolutely. F1 wanted to test out a new concept of a sprint race, and we've mentioned this before, but the sprint race on Saturday to determine the grid on Sunday. And the teams voted that they would be keen to try it out. So as a, a working group has been created to sort out all of the details. Now, the teams are keen to understand things like points waiting, possible prize money, <laughs> and how it would impact driver contracts. The, te the teams are keen to understand all of the rules, how this would work, yep. how this would actually figure out their qualifying on Sunday. All of it. All of it, yes. <laughs> now, the race is set to be 100 uh, kilometers long, and Canada, Italy, and Brazil are sort of the targets. Okay. And the qualifying session for the sprint race would actually be done on Friday, and that would be to set the grid for the sprint race on Saturday, which would be then used to set the, gr the grid for Sunday's feature race. Okay, so here's what I think they should do. If you keep this sprint race idea, I think you should steal from the virtual races that they did, the three they just did, and have somebody else race your sprint race for you and thus set your qualifying, not by Lewis <laughs> Hamilton, but by, you know. Reserve driver. Right, whoever, Anson Davison. Yeah. I don't know, whoever whoever you're, you would like to nominate as your third driver. I think if you're gonna go with the sprint idea, I think you have to go all the way and it's somebody else that's racing your car, not you. And you just have to live with wherever they qualify you. I'm always thinking how they're gonna do this without agreeing to a T car. You know? Well, I know, right? Like, because if you ball it up on Saturday, man, that is like very little time to turn that car around and rebuild a whole new chassis overnight that's right. to, for the race. Unless you're Red Bull, nobody else can do it. Right, <laughs> right Red Bull can do it, but <laughs> wow! And I'm sure yeah. Mercedes or Ferrari can pull it off. I know that's a tall. But order. we watched Red Bull do it, right, with Max. Yeah, we saw Red, Red Bull do which, it. But... Again, so the, somewhere, I mean, everything's on YouTube, right? We I watched a video where they like just show you everything they had to do from when Max, you know, crashed yeah, yeah. and to fix it. And again, earlier I was talking about how even kill the engineers are. Even in that situation, they're still like, yeah, you know, because you you hear the like all the radio community, you know, Christian asks a question and whoever, you know, and it's just like, you know, Christian, 
it's still pretty calm, but he's still a little more like, what's going on? What's going on? He's like, we got it under control. It's okay. We're making a little stew over here. And this guy's over there chopping the onions and we'll have your dinner in five minutes. Don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Right. Like the level of calmness, I, I just, I find that amazing. Cause I think even the calmest person in that situation would be like, well, oh, shit, I don't know. Go get the tools and let's, you know, get this, <laughs> get some duct tape. I don't know. This isn't a situation we practice for. God damn, Max Verstappen, right? Like, I go just, get some monkey glue. And don't right. put it in your hair. <laughs> gorilla glue. A gorilla glue. Monkey That's glue. it. Monkey glue. Gorilla Whatever glue. it is. Gorilla monkey. <laughs> I was close. You were in the right family but yes yeah. it's really good but yeah, yeah get some flex seal and get over here oh that's even better make sure you get the right you... color <laughs> i wonder if they used any flex seal hi phil swift here for flex seal good. i don't know but i just think i i just think that the sprint races you're right you would need uh more of a more yeah you need just bring back the t cars why don't we just have friday racing again you know like why do, why do all this stuff? Why don't we just go back to having an actual third driver, a boy Friday, have an actual car for them and learn something. Sorry, Ziggy. And actually learn something, right? right. Like just have them race on Friday. Yeah. Why just not? have the cars out there, right? And then problem solved. Then you don't need all this tomfoolery. But I still think this is where you should get like a junior driver or your third driver or, you know, you know, get Stoffel Van Doren out there to qualify for. Why not? I just think it's going to get real expensive real quick. Yeah, you know, which is why we got rid of the T cars and yeah. running on Fridays, right? Yeah. It's too expensive. So I mean, yeah, you can knock a wing off and 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 qualifying or whatever on Saturday, but in a race, there's a really good That's chance to get right. damage. Yeah. That's right. You and you don't have as many laps like in qualifying, right? You anyway. Yeah. I agree. That's a that's yeah. always a risk, but it's more of a risk in a race than it is. Yeah, for sure. So it'll be interesting to see if they do that. Who knows? All right. Well, Fair I'm, enough. I'm what are you going to do? Hey, you know what time it is. That's right. It's time for this week's fun slash random fact. The slashies. Exactly. I just thought this one was kind of interesting for those of you just, uh, you know, you're looking for that sort of F1 nugget that never comes up in conversation that you can always lay down when it eventually comes up some point during your lifetime. Yeah. This one is a good one. Okay. The year was 1989. And while Gilles was his favorite, Nigel Mansell was the last Formula One driver to have ever been personally picked by Enzo Ferrari to drive for his team. It was Nigel, our right. man, Nigel. That's right. How about that? Our boy You'd have thought, well, was it Schumacher? No, no. Enzo had passed by then. That's right, right, mm -hmm. right. A lot. But yeah. So Nigel was the, the last F1 driver for Enzo to look at and to actually agree and said, that's the guy I want. This is Enzo Ferrari. That's exactly who it I'd is. I'd like to believe that it's like the Bachelor and or the Bachelorette and that they just lined up the potential drivers and Enzo Ferrari just dealt out roses, right? Like, yeah, right. You're right. the one for me. Right. I know that's not how it happened, but I think no. it's funnier to think of it that way. It's good. I In my like own that. world somewhere. You know, right? Isn't that nice? It is. <laughs> there you go. I mean, we all know that's what Christian Horner does. So well, why, for sure. why wouldn't it work for, you know, Enzo Ferrari as yeah. well? Uh, well, that does it for this week's podcast. Hashtag F1 Jawbreaker. That's right. The eternal gobstopper. The everlasting uh, gobstopper. That's it. I said internal, everlasting. I was close. Everlasting. Keeping with the yes. Lance Stroll references, you know. That's right. So huh? well, tell us what you think about any one of these stories and any one of those topics or whatever topic you want to talk about. Did you know, okay, so somebody posted, I have time, so I'm now just going to interject whatever I want. I <laughs> Go should, for it. I should have taken more time in the beginning instead of racing through the team launches that right. I forgot to tell you that we didn't put in the notes, but I wanted to talk about them. I didn't need to race at all. We got time, but it was Chris Elliott. So like three podcasts ago, you're trying to think of who the guy was from David Letterman that you couldn't remember. Yes, Chris Elliott. Yes. Chris Elliott. That's it. Yes. And so... 
Now, if you listen three three episodes ago, <laughs> you'll know that was it. But uh, somebody actually posted it on our YouTube comments, which then I realized we have YouTube comments. I don't even look at those. Yeah, like, this podcast is on YouTube. I've put a bunch of them up there. They we sure record, are. Yeah, they re-record all the podcasts now, and I don't do fancy editing and all the cool it's stuff this. that you've come to it's expect exactly from other F1 podcasts, which is wonderful. And the editing and all the stuff they do is terrific. But um, but I just record the Talking Heads, and I throw this up there uh, for all of you. If you'd like to see the hand gestures and yeah. uh, body language uh, to these podcasts, you can go to our YouTube channel. And which awesome. random cat shows up this week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you can do that. And, uh, but yeah, so people post and you can comments. see what I'm drinking this week. Which That's is... right. And, and which somebody did. And somebody was like, ah, it's Chris Elliott. I was like, it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it is Chris Elliott. Yeah. And that, that was a reference to as a bald guy, you know, you go yes. around and you meet people and they always try to tell you who you look like. And, and they just, think of the first bold person they can think of and then they just think that's they say that's who you look like and it's like, who no. did they say you look like? oh chris oh because you uh, look phil like collins chris. or chris elliott phil collins was my favorite like, yeah i was like what no no part of you like that even even over zoom no part of you reminds me of phil no. collins but no. um i don't know yeah, and you play guitar not drums but you know whatever right yeah i don't play drums wrong instrument but yeah i don't know people are eh, they are what they are yeah what are you gonna do? That's right. Yep. I don't know. So there anyway, you go. I just wanted to share that with you. No, I'm glad I, you did. I, I could have done it, you know, three weeks ago when I saw that and went, "Oh, that's right, Chris Elliott." But it just now dawned on me again to remind you that that's who it was well, that's that okay. you were thinking of. That I don't again think you look like Chris Elliott at all. But okay, no. they're no, not even both no. blonde. I don't know. No, no, it's yeah. I don't. It's weird. I don't know. <sighs> Like, I don't know. You should you should tell people. See, I would always come up with a snarky response, right? Like, you should tell somebody, like, you know, somebody debonair or something that, like, is really also the opposite of who you are. Not that you're not debonair, but that it would be the opposite of, like, a Chris Elliott or something. That, or, or a Well, Phil I Collins. struggle with the class. No, I... Something, uh... I don't know. Like... Yeah, no, Actually, it'd be funny. I, uh, I should just come up with an automatic like response when people say, "Oh, you look like Chris Elliott or Phil Collins." I say, "Oh, that's interesting." Because most people say I look like Brad Pitt. Yeah. Right, exactly. What? That's Brad what I'm Pitt? saying. You're looking at it. No, I don't. But I don't look like Phil Collins but, either. <laughs> but you just like drop it and keep on going. Right, you just keep going. going. Right. Brad Pitt. What? Yeah. Right. So that's what you have to do. Like I always think, you know, everybody that has a name like this. So inevitably it never fails that whenever somebody's praying, inevitably somebody says, Grace, why don't you say Grace? And inevitably I always say in that voice, like, oh, oh, you're really funny. You're the first person in 40 years of my life to have ever said that. And I'm like, oh God, that was great. I just told you to the president of my company that like in that voice. So it would be like that. You just have to be like, yeah, right. oh, 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 most people tell me I look like Brad Pitt and just walk out of the room, right? I, think of, I always think, Grace, she died 30 years ago. <laughs> Don't dough me down, clock. <laughs> this is good stuff. It's comedy gold, man. This is great. This is your reward for listening to the end of the show. Yeah, you listen to the end of the show, you get all these random quotes. Uh... I don't know. You hey, know. somebody did like that. I made a Joe Satriani uh, analogy <laughs> about bald, so that was good. See? See, you never know. You never know where what what's going to touch a person's life. I know. Or... Somebody's like, "Hey, I'm a big fan of a guitar player, Joe Satriani. He's awesome. I mean, he is. He's an yeah. incredible guitar player." There you go. Tell you another underrated guitar player, Elliot Easton, the Cars. Okay. Very yeah. handy guitar. Player. I know who the Cars are. Yeah. Exactly. All right. I remember well, that they were in my playlist and nobody else's when we did that at the beginning of last uh -huh. season. Even See? though that seemed like the obvious song choice for at least one of the tracks. It is a very obvious song. Thank you. I agree. I don't know. All right. Well, be sure to stop by the website, theparkforme.com. Share your opinion. Just do it. Quorum Civility, a huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters out there who put up with our cheesy movie references and lines and the lack of editing on our YouTube videos and all of the other shortcomings and reasons that we fail, you stick with us through the whole thing and support us. Because if you didn't, we wouldn't have this. We couldn't and wouldn't do this podcast. And everyone who doesn't support us is probably saying, stop supporting them because then they wouldn't have a podcast. But Don't anyway. listen. Why are you listening? If you really got to the end of an hour show and you think people need to stop supporting this, but why are you still listening? <laughs> like it's free. Nobody's making you listen no. to this. Go yes. somewhere else. There's lots of F1 podcasts. That's just mean. 
It is. So if you like the podcast, you can go over to iTunes, give us a little love, give us a good rating over there. It's always appreciated. And uh, we love uh, getting messages and uh, those kind of things from all of our listeners. It's always, um, you know, I know we've been doing this for over 15 years and we're, you know, 720 episodes in and over 800 with downshift episodes, et cetera. But it's still to this very day, incredibly humbling for sure to get messages from people in norway in uh, holland australia um germany russia uh taiwan you know apac amia anywhere Mm -hmm. it's just incredibly humbling to get messages from all of you that listen around the globe yes you know we have a large uh, share of our listeners are in the um in north america and they're awesome for sure and sometimes you go places and you meet them i've been on trade show floors and had people hear my voice and say wait a minute you're negative camera and those kind of things and that's incredible uh but for all of our international listeners and around the globe it's just incredibly humbling you know paul and i wax poetic of our love of australia and all things australia and get messages from a lot of uh, a lot of the folks in the great southern land it's fantastic to hear from you guys um and it's just, uh, it's incredibly humbling still to this very day. Uh, my wife got a freelance, she's, she does uh, marketing and, and brand positioning and all this stuff. And she does that, a lot of that freelance. And she got a freelancing uh, opportunity with this person. And um, come to find out that person, she never met her, starts talking to her about this project and somehow it comes up. And her husband is a huge F1 fan and listens to our podcast and knows us. It was like such a small world. This is bizarre. So incredibly humbling. Um, And so hello to Wendy and your husband. I can't uh, name escapes me now. But anyway, that was wonderful. And um, so thank you for all your messages, for reaching out. Uh, uh, Someone uh, said that it was there was an email bouncing back, but feel free to email us. It's TPF at theparkformay.com if you want to email us. But thanks so much for reaching out, and we really appreciate it. And until next week, when we do it all over again, this is AKA Negative Canberra saying so long, Grace. See you next week. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over.